busy crafters welcome back to my channel today we're going to be making a curtain with this better home thing garden pre-cut fabric that i got from walmart for ten dollars and 88 cents i already went and pre-cut the pre-cuts with for what i needed my window was 16 inches wide and 58 inches long so what i did is i did 17 inches wide and 60 inches long so that way we can make a hem i went ahead and decided not to bring out my big iron so I was going to just do this little one and it took me forever and I suggest don't be lazy go get the big one because you know 47 years later I am now finishing up the the ironing so this fabric is a little bit see-through um, I'm okay with that because it is in the front and it is a lot easier to see who is um, outside you can go ahead and double it up if you would like um but other than that, you know, it turned out really nice. So I went ahead and I made a hem all the way around. This technique, my neighbor across the street, um, she taught me it. Instead of having to pin it, you just go ahead and iron it and it stays there. And then you could just, you know, put it through the machine, the I or the sewing machine. I used to, I was always afraid of sewing machines, so I would actually sew everything by hand. I've made pillows by hand that I would actually take to work with me and on my breaks just start sewing up the pillows. It took forever as well, but it is what it is. And she taught me how to also use the sewing machine and she was actually the one who gave me my very first sewing machine, which I still have. I have upgraded and went to a different sewing machine that has many different settings and everything, but you know, my friend and neighbor Mary was just a wonderful person. And so I'm just going ahead and doing that. I'm making sure that I have at least 16 inches because that's how wide my window is. The curtain that I had there before has been up since we bought the house and that was the biggest curtain that I can find and it was way too small for the window. So I'm like, well, what the heck? Let's make our own. Because you know, that's what we do. We do things to improve our living spaces and it's just so much better when we are able to do it on our own. So now we're just gonna continue watching me do this because you know, hey, why not, I guess. Um, if you're bored, you can continue watching me, you know, do this. I don't know why I kept it in there so long. But um, yeah, so here we go. Just continue doing it like it's, it's already folded, lady, come on. But um, I got the other side started. I'm not going to have you guys watch the whole thing, hopefully. Like, I'm not sure, but, you know, it is what it is. I think you guys got the point. <laughs> this is a really cool technique, and it saves me a lot of, you know, trying to get the pins out of the pin cushion and all that stuff. So now that we had it all the way down, we're going to go ahead, and I just ran it through the machine. Um, there has been a couple slip ups, you know, cause nobody's perfect and that is fine. We're not meant to be perfect. So perfect left the world when Jesus, you know, left the world. So having a little bit of slip up, that's fine. You really can't tell. You really can't, you know, like I said, unless you go over there and, you know, inspect it thoroughly, um, which will make you look weird. So I mean, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Just be like, oh, nice curtain, and then, you know, move on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this is now what we're doing. We're going ahead and sewing it. Um, I placed it to where the end of the curtain was at the end of the foot of the sewing machine. My sewing machine is a brother sewing machine. It's got many different settings on it. I can make the stitches look like flowers or leaves or Whatever, it's a really cool machine. I really enjoy it. And yeah, so now we're just gonna go ahead and stitch up the ends and pull it out of the machine and cut it. And then clean it up. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side as well as the center or the uh, tops and bottoms because we have to make it. So there's the before and after picture and it turned out nice. So now we're gonna go ahead and make these two pillows for the foyer as well. And I got that, my friend Margie picked it up from Hobby Lobby. Um, I can't exactly remember the price, um, but 
you know, it is what it is. I cut these out 15 by 15. I wanted a little bit bigger and I wasn't thinking at the time. So I should have did a little bit bigger, maybe like 17 by 17. That way I had the room to actually make it a 15 inch pillow. Because that's what the other pillow is on the bench. The bench I actually did refurbish. Right there I cut my silicone mat a little bit. Also don't do not do that either. <laughs> but um, everything in the foyer was orange and beige, green and stuff like that. Fall colors really. And when my plant stand broke we brought in the bench that I redid. Unfortunately I didn't get any footage of the bench because it was before I had my YouTube channel. And my parents actually found this TV stand on the side of the road and I redid the bench into an actual bench or I redid the TV stand into the bench that we are about to see when the pillows are on it. And it turned out great. My husband's like, hey, let's just use this. Hey, why not? So once again, we went ahead and ironed out all of the wrinkles and the folds on this pillow because, you know, once you fill it, fill it with the polyfill, I wouldn't suggest heating it up. Okay, because it might get a little too heated and then before you know it, your foyer is burned down or your office or wherever you're heating it up. You know, who knows? But um, this time, this one didn't take 47 years. This one was just, I just did a real quick run through on it to try to get most of it out and flip it over and do the same thing. So when we're making the pillow, we have to make it where the two bright pieces, the two you know, are facing each other because we're going to stitch all the way around the pillow. And the first pillow I actually did the hard way. I didn't start in the middle like I'm supposed to. I started at the end and made it the hard way. So this one I'm just going to pin because we're not really, the, the hem or the seam is going to be on the inside. So just finished up with that or finishing up with that. And then we're going to go ahead and run it through the machine. On my machine, I used a setting of one, I believe. And it was, you know, like medium speed. So right here, I'm starting on the corner. Normally start in the middle and then like end in the middle, but enough for you to get your hand in there to fill the pillow. Because when you have to hand stitch it up without, a, or without seeing the thread, it's a lot harder doing it on the corner like I did. But hey, you know, we have to throw a little bit of excitement into our lives, you know, so why not make things a little bit harder, I guess, right? <laughs> so we're going ahead and finishing up here. I'm just going to go ahead and backstitch it a little bit, and then we are going to be able to turn it inside out and then fill it with the polyfill. Now the polyfill I got from Hobby Lobby years ago. I don't think it's still $2.99. I, it would be very a miracle if it is, because this was probably about three, four years ago that I got all this polyfill. So there's the pillow. Now we just take the little tool and make sure that it's all puffed out and stuff. So now I used half a bag on this. These pillows are for the foyer. It's just something to, when you're taking off your shoes or whatever, you have something other than the wall to lean back on. And so they're not, I don't use the whole polyfill bag that I would normally if it's for your like your head to lay down on to be comfortable with. So I used half a bag. They're still pretty fluffy. They're still pretty nice, you know, but yeah, I just used a half a bag for one pillow and we're making two pillows. So technically I used a whole bag for the two pillows. And now we're gonna go ahead and fight with trying to keep the things, you know, together, trying to, it's a lot easier when it started in the middle you know, and now it's trying to hold it all together and pin it. Now that is a challenge. And by the grace of God, only by the grace of God, I was able to do it by myself. Otherwise, you know, my husband would have been roped in to either hold it or pin it. <laughs> so here we go. And there you go. Now the stitch that I'm about to do, it's the invisible stitch. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty easy. You start your thread under the flap and you just basically go across. I try to show it and it's hard to explain it, but you go under the flap and then across or 
like yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. Like I really I can't explain it at all. So with the gray fabric as well, um, I had enough to make a foyer table runner, which I'm going to do. I probably won't film it, but that's also what it is. The two yards made the curtain and is going to make the foyer table runner as well. So it's all pulling each other in. The reason why I chose red is because now the foyer is slowly turning into gray, black, white, and I needed a pop of color. And since red is one of my favorite colors, then that's what I do. This is, I think, the end of it. See how it doesn't have the, you can't see the thread? So, I think, yeah. There's also the other pillow I believe I show. This is me tying up at the ends, which is good because we're coming to the end of this pillow. The other pillow, I'm not going to have you see the whole process again, but, um, I did start in the, the center of the pillow and then work my way around to almost the center of the pillow as well. Now I'm just fluffing it out, making sure all the bubbles are out. There it is. So see how like halfway through there's the seam and then on the other side there's the seam. Well, now we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I think it just shows it a little bit better of how to do the hidden stitch. I can't explain it, but I learned this off of other YouTubers who were more in depth with it and was able to explain it a little bit better to me. So I just say, you know, if you want to learn this, go ahead and uh, YouTube it, um, seamless or hidden stitch or whatever. And they, they do a great job. So I learned this stitch from another YouTuber. I can't remember her name because like I said, this was probably about three or four years ago that I learned this stitch four pillows because I like to make pillows as well. Um, see how it's like crisscross like a shoelace? That's just what you're doing, but you have to go under the flap. So yeah, I'm going to show, see how it's going back and forth like the shoelace. And then once you pull it tight, you can't see the thread at all. See, there you go. And that's just how you know it is. So there's the before and after picture of the bench that I redid. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.